Hello and welcome to the course of Software Defined Networking. In this lecture, I will discuss virtualization. The objective for this week are that at the end of this lecture, uh, you would be able to understand the concept of virtualization. You will also be able to list the advantages and disadvantages of using the virtualization technology. In addition to that, uh, you will learn and would be able to differentiate between type 1 and type 2 hypervisor. And also, uh, you will explore what is the role of hypervisor in the virtualization technology. And finally, all these concepts will pave the ways for NFV, net Network Functions Virtualization, which is going to be the topic of discussion for the next week. Roadmap for this lecture is that we are going to start with a background why we need virtualization and then we will jump into the introduction of virtualization after the introduction uh, we will explore some advantages disadvantages and requirements for the virtualization technology after that the second half of this lecture is about hypervisor which is uh, a technique a technology a solution or you can say a software layer for the implementation of virtualization and there are different types of hypervisor like type 0 type 1 and type 2 we will see them after that we will discuss briefly discuss licensing issues if we are using softwares uh, in uh, on top of virtualization so what are the issues and finally a brief overview of network function virtualization so let us start okay uh in some situations there are organizations which actually deploy multi computers but they do not need to use multi computers they actually do not want them for example we have a company and the company has an email server a web server ftp server or some server for e-commerce and other etc and all these servers actually run on different computers the concept of multi-computer and they are in the same equipment rig and they are all connected by high-speed network so it is an environment which is known as a uh, multi-computer one reason for all these servers that actually run on separate machines in the form of multi-computer may be that one machine cannot handle the load of the whole organization another reason could be reliability the organization management simply does not trust the operating system to run 24 hours a day or 365 days a year with no failure because failure are everywhere so for reliability reason they are using multi computers or maybe one computer is not able to handle the load by putting each service on a separate computer uh, it is obvious that if one of the server crashes at least the other uh, servers would not be affected and this is good for security also even for example if an intruder manages to compromise the web server then he or she would not be uh, able to immediately access sensitive emails or you can say the email server or maybe the web server or maybe sorry the web server has been compromised some other type of server like ftp server etc so what i mean to say is that for security point of view it is good to keep the web servers on separate machines if one server has been hacked then it will not compromise other servers in most of the cases and there is a property which is known as sandboxes sandboxing in order to uh, refer to this concept that i just explained so while isolation and fault tolerance are achieved by this approach uh, this solution is quite expensive and also quite hard to manage 
because so many machines are involved. So what to do now? If we are not going toward the multi-computer solution, although it has advantages, but it is expensive and it is hard to manage. So what to do? A possible and popular uh, and alternative solution could be to use the virtual uh, virtualization or virtual machine technology. So what is actually virtualization? At an abstract level, it is the separation, the logical separation of physical resources from direct access of user. And for that to achieve, we need a special layer that is known as uh, a layer of virtualization. This layer actually transform the physical computing resources at the physical layer into virtual form or into virtual resources and users can actually uh, use these virtual resources to satisfy their computing needs so what you see here in this figure actually uh, on the left hand side we have a traditional computing environment in which uh, different applications actually run directly on top of an operating system and that operating system actually run on a pc or on a or on a server and in traditional computing environment each pc or each server would run only one operating system at a time so in this traditional approach, uh, the vendor had to rewrite parts of its application for each operating system or for each platform they would like to run on. And that is one of the possible reasons that you cannot install, for example, Microsoft Office products on Linux because they have been developed for Windows operating system. All the solutions are available to install them on Linux, but for normal user, that is not possible. So the fundamental idea of virtualization to, is to abstract the hardware of a single computer into several different execution environments. Or you can say that virtualization is the process of abstracting these physical computing resources such that multi applications can share a single physical hardware so it will enable a single PC or a single server to simultaneously run multiple operating system and multiple applications so virtualization actually allow a single computer to host multiple virtual machines and each virtual machine will have potentially be running a different operating system or maybe a different version of the same operating system so on the right hand side of this figure we have a virtualized computing environment S similar to the to the right to the left hand side figure at the bottom we have physical resources however in this case the user do not have direct access to these physical resources instead we are relying on an intermediate layer and that layer is the layer of virtualization and this layer of virtualization will convert will change these physical resources into virtual resources and then the user at the top would be able to access these virtual resources here uh, is another figure that actually demonstrate the concept of virtualization and it actually shows a typical arrangement as i just mentioned at the bottom we have the hardware and that hardware is shared okay so the hardware is shared and uh, on top of that we have an operating system and that operating system is known as the host operating system this is just a single arrangement later on we will see that other arrangement are also possible and on top of that operating system we have vmm which is known as virtual machine monitor 
and recently it has been given a new name and that is called the hypervisor which actually runs on top of the host operating system in this particular case this uh, virtual machine monitor or vmm or hypervisor it will actually support uh, virtual machines you can see we on top of vmm we have different virtual machine virtual machine one two three four five and so on up to virtual machine n so vmm actually supports virtual machines which are emulated hardware devices in the form of virtual devices so each virtual machine will actually be running a separate operating system here we are running windows 7 here we have windows 10 here we have Ubuntu, on other virtual machine we have uh, Linux Mint, on another we have Fedora and so on. So what I mean to say is that these virtual machine can run or can host different operating system. The virtual machine monitor or the VMM actually handles each operating system communication with the processor which is a hardware device with the storage medium which is a hardware device or even with the network. So key to the success of this approach is this is that this virtual machine monitor uh, provides a layer a layer of abstraction between the software environment and the underlying hardware and this host operating system and the beauty is that all this stuff is actually transparent to the user transparent to these softwares to these applications that are actually running and they are able to make efficient use of the hardware below it so virtualization actually is the process of abstraction and that abstraction will actually hide the details from the software from the applications and from the user and it will enable a single PC or a single server to simultaneously run multiple operating system multiple operating system or multiple version of the same operating system now let us see some advantages of this virtualization technology the first and most obvious advantage of virtualization is resource sharing. And that is actually the basic motivation for using virtualization. And that is to efficiently and effectively share resources among multiple users. This concept is similar to multitasking operating system where rather than doing one task at a time, unused computing power and resources is actually utilized to run another task so uh, consider an organization that has many servers and all the servers doing a single or or you can say a small cluster of a related task without losing the security of the isolated environment virtualization allows these server within the organization to be replaced by a single physical machine and that physical machine will host a number of virtual servers so resource sharing is the advantage next advantage is migration and this is a big advantage of virtualization it comes in handy if an upgrade is required or maybe when a hardware is fail so it could be quite simple process to migrate a virtual machine from one physical machine to another and hence it will increase the backup capability also so if a server for example crashes the data on that server can be set to be automatically transferred to another server in the network and there are different techniques available for migration for example some of the techniques require offline migration some is for with some technique it is possible to do online migration as well so migration is another advantage 
and the third advantage is cost reduction is in case of virtualization we are able to make uh, better use of physical resources because we are able to run multiple virtual machine on top of a single set of physical resources so automatically we are reducing the cost instead of deploying separate servers why not to have uh, to install one server and then on top of that we can actually deploy multiple machines so reduction in cost hardware cost maintenance cost maintenance cost or even space you can reduce space instead of having several server why not to have a single server so there is another advantage that we can actually reduce uh, computing infrastructure cost as well like virtualization make uh, uh, better resources of the physical uh, computing and also associated cost with the management with the management of the infrastructure for example infrastructure mean the physical space required for those machines for those server the power requirement for running those machine the cooling system required to to keep those servers um, uh, in an environment that is feasible for them and also the human resources that are required to administer the huge amount of servers so if you use virtualization it will actually increase the infrastructure cost if you need more server you can actually deploy more virtual server over the existing physical resources and also uh, there is capacity expansion in case of traditional uh, computing environment if you require more server then obviously you will require more infrastructure more floor more power more cooling more human resources but in case of virtual the expansion is quite simple the capacity expansion is quite simplified and it is easier to increase and expand the virtual machine as compared to the traditional environment we also have simplified system installation uh, in the sense that installation of a new system has become easier and also cost effective in the virtual environment a new system can be installed almost within no time by cloning a virtual machine instance so fresh fresh installation in case of virtualization is much easier as compared to the physical machine installation this is something uh, which is quite interesting try new ideas with the help of virtualization you can try out new ideas at low cost typically in large companies individual departments or group of uh, people think of an interesting idea and then go out and buy a server to implement that idea and if the new idea catches on uh, 100 if the new idea required for example 100 of servers then the corporation the, uh, the the businesses need to expand their data centers just to test the new idea and in some cases it is often hard to move the software to existing machines because each application often need a different version of the operating system a different platform to be deployed different um, different supporting uh, applications in some cases they would be required their own libraries their own configuration files and much more just to test the new idea so with virtual machine this is something that can be done with no cost if you need a different operating system to test your idea go for it in the virtual environment if you need different libraries install them on a different platform in the virtual environment if you need different configuration files just do them in the virtual environment so you can test new ideas easily in the virtualization with the virtualization technology and you can also deploy software within the virtual machine for testing purposes and this is another important use of virtual machine a programmer who actually want to make sure that his software or her software will work on different platforms like windows 7 windows 8 several version of linux freebsd openbsd 
OS X another system so the programmer doesn't need to have a dozen computer to test the software on different platform instead he or she can merely create a dozen virtual machines on a single computer and install different operating system on each virtual machine and then test the software or develop the software on the different platform and also the last advantage is security as we saw that virtualization actually aids a layer of abstraction over the physical hardware so virtual machine cannot directly access the physical resources anymore what we are doing here we are actually securing our hardware this can restrict the amount of destruction that might occur when some malicious software attempts to damage the system or corrupt our data but on the downside we have some disadvantages as well and the first one is the single point of failure multiple virtual machines can be run over one physical machine and this approach actually increase the probability of failure of a number of virtual machines in case of failure of a single physical machine now you may urge that this problem can be easily addressed how by backup servers backup resources and by putting those virtual servers on the backup set of physical resources so solutions are possible but still it is a problem if you are not using the backup resources or redundant servers the issue that is a major concern is the performance reduction reduce reduction in the performance and this concern is something which need uh, different solutions is like a challenge and there is a concern whether our virtual environment has the capacity to accomplish the full performance of the actual physical system in most of the cases no and it has been uh, seen through researches that virtual servers can achieve up to 80 to 90 percent of the performance of the actual physical servers and this is quite uh, obvious when you install a windows operating system inside linux operating system for example and then you run the windows operating system by using virtualization so the performance is not that as you have it on this on the physical machine so performance degradation is a serious concern and last but not the least is the difficult in root cause analysis with virtualization a new layer of complexity is added we have the abstraction but we also have the complexity and this complexity can cause new problems and the main difficulty is that if something does not work as it is supposed to do then it may require considerable extra efforts to find the cause of the problem where actually the problem is because you have a layer of abstraction you do not have direct access to the hardware so where the problem actually is to find the root cause is a problem in virtualization after discussing the advantages and disadvantages let us see some characteristics we expect virtualization we expect virtual machines to work almost in a similar way as our physical machine works in particular it must be possible to boot the virtual machine virtual operating system like they are running on the real machines and install software on top of them in a similar way that we can do on our physical machine and this is actually the task of virtual machine monitor hypervisor to provide this illusion and to do the things efficiently so indeed hypervisor should score well in these three dimensions safety fidelity and efficiency and safety mean that the hypervisor should have full control of the virtualized resources as it 
set on top of the hardware resources so it must be able to fully control the virtualized resources fidelity fidelity means that the behavior of a program on a virtual machine should be identical to date of the same program running on the on the physical hardware the user will not get the feeling that the, the that the the install application or software is actually running on a virtualized server oops and then we have the third characteristic that is the efficiency and it means that you can use the virtual machines without intervention by the hypervisor you can achieve almost the same performance as you can get in the uh, in the traditional computing environment so much of the code in the virtual machine should run without uh, intervention by the hypervisor so efficiency is another characteristic in the virtualization one of the thing that actually make stuff possible and there is actually the heart of virtualization is known as the virtual machine monitor or VMM. It is also known as the hypervisor. So now let us see what a hypervisor is. Traditionally, applications run directly on an operating system, on a personal computer or on a server. Each PC or each server would run only a single operating system at a time. And therefore applications vendor had to rewrite parts of their application for each operating system or for each platform they would run on and support. And this will actually increase the time to market for new features and functions. It will increase the likelihood of defects in the softwares. It will increase the quality testing efforts. And it will also lead to increased price. So to address such issues, we need virtualization technology, which actually enable a, a single PC or server to simultaneously run multiple operating system or multiple session of a single operating system. A machine running virtualization software can host numerous operating system and numerous applications. And they could be even run on different operating system but all on a single hardware platform but that is not possible without the use of vmm so the solution that actually enable the virtualization is known as vmm or simply hypervisor it is actually a software that creates and run virtual machines and this software vmm sits between the hardware and the virtual machines and it acts as a resource broker. So, a uh, hypervisor is actually a software that will enable a server or that will enable the physical resources of a server to be logically abstracted and appear to the operating systems on top of that uh, is as they are running on the actual machines so actually it abstract the shared hardware and it try to appears to the operating system running on it as if they are running directly on that hardware itself beside the hypervisor will allow one host computer to support we have one host and it will allow to support multiple guest virtual machines and these virtual machine will virtually share these resources and these resources are memory processing networking resources storage etc this virtual machine manager or monitor or vmm or hypervisor it also manages the request by these virtual machine to access these hardware resources like RAM, CPU, processor, etc. And this VMM also control and monitor the execution of these virtual machines over it. So the hypervisor 
is actually an intermediary layer between the physical system and the virtualized system. In this case, the physical system is going to be the host and the virtualized machine are going to be the guests. There is a concept which is related with the hypervisor and that concept is known as consolidation ratio and it is a simple concept. As we know that the hypervisor allow multiple virtual machines to safely coexist on a single physical server host and they share the host resources. So the number of guest machines that can exist on a single host is measured as a consolidation ratio. For example, a host that is supporting six virtual machines is said to have a consolidation ratio of six to one. You have physical servers and then you have a virtualized host and in this case the virtualized host can actually uh, provide support for six individual hosts like we have virtual machine one virtual machine two virtual machine three virtual machine four five and six so the consolidation ratio here is six one we have six virtual machine and one physical machine the initial hypervisors in the commercial market, they actually provide a very low consolidation ratio. That is 4 to 1 and 12 to 1. But now it is increasing. Why? Because companies want, want to remove the cost. So if you are able only to install 6 machines on a single server, so the cost reduction is low. But if you are able, for example, to deploy 24 machines on a single server, then the cost is reduced more. So companies prefer to reduce the cost, remove the cost because they often spend millions of dollars annually on buying physical servers. So with fewer physical server, less power is required, less cooling is required, less administration, personnel are required and things like that. Even few cable are required, few network switches are required. And also, if we talk about the infrastructure, less floor space is required. So server consolidation becomes important. And it plays an important role in the reduction of the cost. Now let us see different types of hypervisors. Virtualization is all about abstraction. And that is possible with the help of hypervisor. And hypervisor is a software that provides that abstraction. It acts like a broker or you can say a traffic police officer acting as a proxy for the guest virtual machines as they request and consume resources of the physical host or of the physical server. So this virtual machine, uh, virtual machine This virtual machine monitor or this hypervisor actually mimics uh, the characteristic of a physical server. Once this hypervisor is installed, you can create several virtual machines. You can install several different operating systems. Like you can see here, we have installed Windows and Linux. So once the virtual machine is created, then you can actually power it on that virtual machine like you power it on your physical server. You can load the operating system like you load the operating system in a physical environment. But the difference is that this virtual machine will actually be able uh, to to see only the resources it has been configured with, not all the resources of the physical server itself. For example, here you have 10 GB of hard disk, but you have allocated only 2 GB to the Windows operating system. Then this operating system, this virtual machine would be able to see only the 2 uh, GB hard disk. Okay, now coming to the types of hypervisor. 
Actually, there are two broad categories of hypervisor. They are the type 1 and type 2 hypervisor. But let me tell you, we also have a third category of hypervisor and that is known as type 0 hypervisor. Although that is not mentioned in this lecture. But you have to know that type 0 also exists. And they existed many years under many years from now under different names like partitions, like domains. In type 0 hypervisor, the hypervisor has to be encoded in the firmware and it has to be loaded at the boot time. In turn, it loads the guest image to run in each partition. However, type 0 hypervisor, they have limited functionalities, limited features. For example, for example, uh, we have a physical system and it has been split into four virtual systems and each server, each system has its own dedicated CPU, dedicated memory and dedicated I.O. devices. And each guest system will believe that they has dedicated hardware, although it has dedicated hardware. So it simplify implementation, but type 0 uh, hypervisor is they are coded in the firmware they were not an appropriate solution and as they have dedicated set of resources so there is another problem what is important for discussion is the type 1 and type 2 hypervisor so let us see what is type 1 hypervisor type 1 hypervisor is also known as native hypervisor or bar metal hypervisor in this type 1 hypervisor approach the hypervisor is directly installed over the physical machine or over the physical server hardware platform. You can see in this case we have the hardware components like CPU, disk, network, interrupts etc. And then on top of that we have the hypervisor layer. Since the hypervisor is the first layer over the hardware resources. This technique is also known as bar metal approach. We have the bar metal, we have the hardware and on top of that we have the hypervisor. In this approach, the hypervisor communicates directly with the system hardware. And on top of that, you can install different operating system, different virtual machines. One of the virtual machine is running Windows operating system. Another virtual machine is running Linux operating system. And we have a control domain which actually controls these virtual machines. And on top of that operating system, we can actually run different supported applications. Like on Windows, you can run Excel, Word, etc. And on Linux, you can run Mplayer, Emacs, etc. These are the packages for the Linux. Some examples of these categories are mentioned here. VMware, ESX, ESXi server, and Microsoft Hyper-V. These are examples of the type 1 category. Many type 1 hypervisors are, are closed source commercial softwares like VMware ESX while others are open source and even some are hybrid there is a, a combination of open and closed source they are not mentioned here but one of them is Citrix Zen server and it has an open version available as well there is Zen operating system Zen uh, VM or hyper VMM or hypervisor so type 1 hypervisor are commonly found in uh, in big companies in data centers and that is why as they can directly interact with the hardware they become the number one choice for the data center operating systems so normally we do not use them in our daily life or small organization do not use them they become the number one choice for the data centers and by using this type 1 hypervisor data center manager can control and manage the operating systems and applications in a sophisticated way.
and there uh, they are actually they inside the data center they use special purpose operating system not windows not linux maybe linux they are using but not windows so they are using special purpose operating system and they actually run natively on the hardware in most of the cases so instead of using their traditional approach data centers now they are using type 1 hypervisor and on top of them they can manage the hardware resources efficiently so this is about type 1 hypervisor on which the hype the vmm is actually installed on top of the hardware this uh, before moving to the type 2 hypervisor let me tell you some of the advantages of type 1 hypervisor is in this case the hypervisor usually have a limited set of uh, device drivers so this is a disadvantage of type 1 hypervisor is it is installed directly on top of the hardware so usually it has a limited set of device drivers built into it so type 1 hypervisor you can say has limited hardware support or you can say that they cannot be run on a wide variety of hardware platforms as we will see there is not the case with type 2 hypervisor so the limitation is that a uh, limited set of device drivers or limited hardware support or you cannot run it on a wide variety of platform however type 1 hypervisor since the type 1 hypervisor can directly access the hardware resources so in most of the cases it provide better performance as compared to the type 2 hypervisors type 1 hypervisor they are actually more advanced and they offer more feature than type 2 and that is why they are the number one choice for the data centers now let us move to type 2 this is what we are familiar with in this approach we have the hardware layer the hardware devices and on top of that we do not have a hypervisor we have a host operating system and it could be anything linux it could be windows etc so in this approach an operating system is the first layer above the hardware what does it mean it means you have to install the operating system on top of your hardware on top of your pc on top of your server so first you have to install an operating system and it could be it could be a windows operating system it could be a linux operating system and then on top of that you have to install the the type 2 hypervisor or vmm and then it can run any uh, other uh, virtual machines for example in this particular case we have guest operating system and that guest operating system in wind is windows okay so inside the hypervisor multiple operating systems or multiple virtual machines can be run in this case we have only a single operating system the operating system that is installed over the host machine is actually known as the host operating system so in this case linux is the host operating system and the operating system that is actually installed on top of the hypervisor is known as the guest operating system so windows in this case is our guest operating system so in this case first we have to install the host operating system and then the hypervisor is installed it is a software like you are familiar with the vmware so you install vmware which is type 2 hypervisor or if you are using linux then you have to install virtual box for example which is from oracle on top of that okay so you install it on your current operating system that is running on the host machine and after the hypervisor installation you have to install other virtual machines other operating system so in this approach the host operating system actually supplies the hardware drivers for the underlying physical resources it make type 2 hypervisors uh, compatible for a wide variety of hardware platforms so type 2 hypervisors depend for much of their functionality 
on a host operating system such as Windows, Linux, OS X, etc. When you start the guest operating system for the first time, it acts like a newly booted computer and it will expect to find DVD drive, CD-ROM, USB, uh, USB drive, etc. Like you normally install an operating system on the physical machine. However, the difference is that the drive could be a virtual device. For instance, it is possible to store the image as an ISO file on the hard drive of the host system and then give, um, tell the hypervisor to load it, the operating system from there. And, and the ISO file will work like a DVD drive because things are virtual. So you can install operating system from that ISO file and the system will 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 get the feeling that it is, is, is installing the operating system from a DVD drive. Some of the examples are mentioned here. VMware very commonly use uh, a hypervisor type 2. We have Microsoft Virtual PC as well and VirtualBox from Oracle. All are example of type 2 hypervisors. Now let us see some advantages of this setup. Hy uh, type 2 hypervisor. The obvious advantage of this approach is that you can run a variety of general purpose operating system and running them will require no changes to the host operating system. For example, a student can use type 2 hypervisor to test uh, different versions of operating system to test different software to check new ideas without replacing the native operating system. So that is another advantage. You can check different versions, different platforms, different software, different ideas without changing the host operating system. However, the disadvantage of uh, this approach is that a hosted hypervisor does not have direct access to the hardware resources. You can see, you cannot directly access the resources. This hyper, as we saw in type 1, you can directly access the hardware resources. Here you cannot access the hardware resources. Hence, all the requests from the virtual machines or from the hypervisor, they must go through the host operating system and this might degrade the performance of the virtual machines. And this is actually an additional overhead of running. For example, you are running a host operating system, on, uh, a guest operating system on top of the host operating system like Windows. So in that case, the performance will degrade. So these were the two basic types of hypervisor. Normally we are interested in using type 2 hypervisor because the approach is very much common for the common users. Now let us see some licensing issues. If you are using software with virtualization, then there are some licensing issues. Why? Because some software is licensed on a per CPU basis or per system basis especially when you buy software for the companies. In other words, uh, when companies buy a program, they have the right to run it on just one CPU. Okay, you have to run the software on one CPU. But the question is, what is the CPU now? As we know about virtualization, so what is the CPU now? Does the contract between the organization and the software company, is the contract give the organization right to run the software on multiple virtual machines or not? Because virtual machines are running on the same physical machine. So you can say, I am using a single CPU. But on the other side, you have installed 10 virtual machines. So now, 
you are using 10 virtual CPUs. So how to resolve this issue? Many software vendors are somewhat unsure of what to do here. The problem is much worse in companies that have a license allowing them to have N machines running the software at the same time. So N machines could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Especially when virtual machine comes and go on demand. So in that case, you can install more machines and you can actually uh, remove more machines as well. So in some cases, software vendors have put an explicit clause in the license that this software is forbidden. It is forbidden to run the software on virtual machines or on unauthorized virtual machines. Now, for companies, they run all their software exclusively on virtual machine. This could be really, really a problem. You are you have only virtual machines in your organization, but the software does not allow it to be run on virtual machine. And you need those software. So what you will do now? Okay, because the issues could be uh, brought up into the court in some cases. And then uh, maybe it depends how the organization responds to them. And these things remain uh, open until now. So how we can resolve these issues? Okay, after discussing virtualization, now we have paved the grounds for our upcoming topic. There is network function virtualization. Now you have the idea of virtualization. You would be in a place to understand network function virtualization. Because what you can see on the right hand side is quite familiar to you now. We have a shared hardware resources. On top of that, we have a hypervisor or virtual machine monitor. Now, what is hypervisor? You know the concept. And on top of that, we have different virtual machines. Virtual machine 1, 2, 3, 4. What is virtual machine? You are quite familiar with them now. And then each and every virtual machine is running its own operating system. Like operating system 1, operating system 2, 3 and 4. And on top of that, we have different applications. But here, we do not have application. Here, we are dealing with network functionalities. And this is what NFV about. So, uh, we are studying SDN and a key driving, driving, uh, driving factor or a leading factor in the deployment of the SDN is the need to provide flexible network response to the widespread use of virtualized servers. Virtual machine technology over the internet has been used for application level server functions as we just saw. It could be database server, could be cloud server, web server, email server, FTP server, and things like that. However, the same virtualization technology can be applied to network devices. What are those network devices? You have switches, you have routers, you have firewalls, you have intrusion detection system, etc. The virtualization technology can also be applied to these network devices. In a broader sense, NFV actually decouples the network functions. Like, what is the functions of the, the functionality of the router routing? Okay. Firewall logic, switching logic, IDS logic, separate them, decouple them from the devices and implement these functions in the software. That is the basic concept of NFV. And for it to achieve, it will utilize the standard virtualization technologies that actually run on high performance hardware to virtualize the network functions. 
NFV and SDN are actually independent, but they are complementary scheme. They are linked with one another. They are required for one another. Why? Because in the SDN, we have studied that SDN actually decouple data and control plane of the network traffic. While on the other side, the NFV will actually decouple the network functions from the specific hardware platform. And how it is achievable? It is achievable with the help of virtualization. So virtualization can be applied to the data plane functions of the routers and of the switches, firewall, etc. Okay, so this is the basic concept of NFV. That now we are going to separate the functionalities of these uh, network devices. If we are going to decouple the functionalities from these devices. We are going to implement those functionalities in the software. Okay, so in the coming week, we will be discussing more about NFV, its architecture, different layers, and things like that. So for today, this was the last slide. Thank you so much for attending the lecture. See you in the physical virtual, see you in the virtual class in the live discussion session. Take care of yourself. Goodbye.